Hello, and welcome to the Ascendant Art Podcast, where we are on a search for art that is ascending above the mainstream. This is Mike with Catalytic Comics, your host, here with co-hosts Vinny from Little Chad and Joey from Keeper's Cairn. And tonight also we have one additional guest, which is John Pa, who is a commission artist. Tonight we're talking about the commission art process and about etiquette and all those good things. And of course, all the great artwork put out by this artist. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing all right. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. This is still pretty wild. Oh, it's it's a lot of fun. Not to mention we've already got some of the uh, first great members of our audience. We've got Anna Main and we got Xander here. Good evening, guys. I can see all over there. Yeah, so I just I had an idea because we've been interviewing a lot of different creators, right, just on projects overall. And this is one area I think that especially for a lot of uh, writers, they don't know a lot about it at first. And yes, hello, Spooky Pretzels. And Rob Crow. Oh, we've got Rob Crow here. Good. But yeah, it was one of the things I started to learn as, as a writer is that there's this thought of like, hey, like I've got a comic project or I've got some other project and I know I want to get artwork commissioned, but like I've got so many questions. I got no idea where to begin. And then I know um, you're, you're, of course, on the other side of that, that like you've got all of those great drawing skills. And there are tons of people out there who are coming to fill up your commission slots all the time. So there's pretty much. And I imagine that there's got to be a lot of stories about how people on either side of that process come to meet each other to either get a great experience or one that makes for great podcast material. So, yeah, I guess first thing is, yeah, just tell me about how uh, you got into this type of work, what you enjoy about it. Just tell us about it. I guess to get started, it was back in 2020 when the pandemic really, really hit. I was pretty much living on my own. And in addition, I was still in college. I was just trying to find a way to support myself. And I wasn't entirely sure where to begin. And in addition, like years earlier, I had doubts about potentially making a living off of my art. I had doubts about that. But I did get some encouragement from friends and family to not give up on that. And I believe it was during the pandemic when I was reached out by another fellow commissioner, Captain Zero. He pretty much showed me the ropes on pricing my work, having a number of services to offer. Are there there a lot of different services one can offer? It depends on the artist, to be honest. But for me, it's relatively straightforward. I do a lot of um, pinup works and single characters sometimes they could be doubles yeah that's true because there's been a couple of times i've looked for projects that are like three or four characters drawn and not a lot of people do that necessarily yeah it can be time consuming at times because i know even um because like when i went out and i did uh was it covers for the Petro Patriot Ashcan I did? I know I went back and forth with uh, that cover artist who was at that's uh, Jay Williams art. But like we went back and forth a number of times just to figure out like how to get just one character to stand just in the shot in the frame so it would work well with the letters. Sure. And then you're right, like as you add each character, now you've got to like work on the whole composition of the shot, right? Yeah, exactly. And that can be time consuming. And I'm still trying to get my grip on that. I'm still rather rusty when it comes to backgrounds and just setting up environments. And that's true, by the way, because I've seen that on different commission sheets, because like people will talk about drawing people, adding the background is as part of it. And then, of course, complex armor and vehicles and stuff like that, because you're like, it's a whole different art form beyond just drawing people. Yeah, very much so. I mean, should we also address the elephant in the room on commissioning and what a lot of people make their money commissioning, which is the NSFW? Some artists do it and make a lot of money. Some artists don't. And so that I know has to be something that should be brought up, you know, when you're talking to an artist to make sure that the what you're asking for is within the boundaries that they'll draw. Yeah, I believe that setting some sort of boundaries is important because you don't want any client trying to take advantage of you in some way and put you in a position that you're not exactly comfortable with. Yeah, and one of the things that we're going to do for this first hour is to try and come up with kind of like a set of just guidelines or thoughts from the commissioner side. What are some things to consider when you get into this? And oh yeah, yeah, Animate's got a great point here. I remember uh, there are a few other artists I reach out to that were not necessarily looking to come on the stream, but they did pass along like some of their experiences to me. And one of the things I understand is that because you're paying someone, that does not mean that they automatically become competent at what you want to do. And furthermore, they're not your friend. 
it's a business transaction, just like any other service you go to. Like in my case, for example, I make websites and there are cases that even if I agree with the person's content, even if I agree with what they want to do, sometimes I'll still tell people no, because it's just not work that I want to do. And speaking of that, I know for your case, Vinny, you had, you had a little bit of experience just like looking around the different art styles for uh, little Chad. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you know, when you're working on a project from a creative side, like the example that I, that some people kind of would would be like Merryweather comics. You know, the guy who does those comic strips. Same thing. It's he's a writer and creator, and he works with an artist team that you know suits his style and what he wants to do. In my case, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, and and I was looking around at different types of things that I could do. When you're the person looking for it, sometimes you end up commissioning several people to get to the style that you'd like, and that's perfectly fine too. You should understand that going in. Don't think that your first artist that you pick is necessarily going to be the one that gets it just right. And also, sometimes when you get artists who are just starting out, it can be more difficult of a process for you as the person commissioning. In my case, I'm a little more freewheeling with my commission art. I give people my basic parameters and I like to see their style kind of take that and kind of get what they're giving me from what I'm, you know, my basic stuff, because I like the artist to make their content. So when you're dealing with someone new, they can sometimes want too much direction. So that's just something that I got from my experience too. I, I preferred having somebody, you know, work to work with who had some experience and could bring their own styling to it. I do have experience with dealing with having gone to comic conventions and, and commissioning, usually in my case, sketch covers is what I used to like to get done. What I would do is the first day, like on a Thursday artist preview night or the Friday, depending on how the convention worked, I would walk around to see the different artist styles and just I would just cruise the artist alley for like a couple hours seeing the different types before I would figure out which person I wanted to approach with like a comic sketch cover that I wanted done. So whether it was a Star Wars one, a Back to the Future one, um, for instance, like a Back to the Future one's a good example. I actually decided on I went with the uh, one of the artists of the Rick and Morty comic book because i wanted them to go <laughs> have him chained up told him to him yet. <laughs> so i decided like oh it would be a fun back to the future sketch cover to have like rick and morty doing back you know back to the future since that's kind of their inspiration anyway so you know once i decide that you go to the artist you give them an idea like hey i'd like that kind of classic doc brown rick with marty mcfly and morty then it's the discussion is like do you want the delorean or not that's extra you know because you're drawing in a background car in addition to the characters and so that's the part where you talk with the artists about what the price points are usually artists will have at conventions like you know for a full figure it's this for that you know for a full background with multiple characters it's that if you want it colored it's extra you know they're usually pretty good about putting that out there so um, that's my experience and so it's good to think about what you want be open with it but also once you give it over to the artist don't micromanage the artist right let the artist do their thing and be ready to take that once you've given that instruction that's my experience and how it's worked best for me over the years you mentioned that about um, micromanaging the artist. I know that one artist in particular I like to commission, which is uh, Ink Fi, if you've uh, seen her out on Twitter. And it's interesting because like her style does not necessarily fit a lot of the art I'm looking for because it's a very feminine style, whereas my book is, for the most part, a pretty masculine book. But um, one thing I do appreciate about working with her, though, she's probably like her and then also you, John, are probably like the top people when it comes to just straight up professionalism. And in her case, she publishes extensively on professionalism on her channel. And I know one of the things she talked about is commissioners will often go one of two directions. Either one is they'll be overly critical because they'll have a very specific thought in their mind. And yeah, I encountered one. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Tell me about it, dude. And I'll tell you some of my stories. Okay, so I do have this. Um, I do have one client. I believe we do talk on Discord. I think he has a very specific idea for a particular character of his. He can be very specific on the most minute details, even like the strand of hair. Like if it's off by one, he'll point that out. And like every time I give him like a new sketch, he would just have like several notes ready. And it would take like several tries until I get it right. I believe one time I almost blew a fuse, but I tried my best not to and be as patient as I can. And that takes willpower and discipline. 
it. If, if you have a vision that is that specific that a stray strand of hair is going to throw you off the mark, draw it your fucking self. Like at that point, <laughs> you're not I have wrong, very you're not wrong visions, so I am learning to draw the shit that I want to draw because I, I don't want to be that asshole who's like, no, no, I need you to shift this three inches to the left and bring this down. <laughs> the sad thing is I have done that once. We went through like three iterations on one character's hair once. And what's funny is like, even even though I still wasn't satisfied at that point, I suddenly realized like, you know what? I've already asked him to like change this twice. I'm like, I'm straining this guy. I better stop. I, I just need to be, I need to be happy with what I got because it did look pretty good. And um, because that is one of the things is that even though like you're not, you you don't buy friendship, um, right? Every mm -hmm. business relationship is a relationship. And that does involve also learning how to work with each person. The other part of it too is, you know, when you met, because a few people mentioned about letting the artist be the artist. What can be interesting is sometimes also, um, even like straight up mistakes by some artists, or at least things that you consider mistakes actually end up fueling the creative process. And, and it's too bad that for some reason, my computer keeps crashing every time I try to share the screen. But I remember there was uh, an artist I hired to do some, uh, some uh, sketch portraits of my characters in uniforms. And he drew like a different set of body proportions on one of my female characters, right? Like it was a thin character and he drew someone who was quite thick with the double C's. <laughs> And then I suddenly realized it's like, actually, this looks more like one of my other characters. And what's funny is like, there's now like an entire like B plot that stemmed out of that one picture. And the funny thing was, it never came to my mind until I saw that picture. And then in another random example, because um, in my story, a lot of the uniform designs are actually based on the Chinese military. Uh, one guy's like, hey, I'm going to draw a character with a gun. And then... For some reason, like once we did that variation, I'm like that also like kicked off a whole bunch of things. And sometimes like you don't think to ask for those things. And then you end up realizing, oh man, like this guy gave me something I never would have thought of otherwise. Right. Yeah, I think those little things can really trigger your imagination sometimes. Like sometimes I would do personal takes on characters that I would be commissioned to work on or even just fan art in general. I just really like making stuff for people. And sometimes I do a personal twist that could possibly inspire someone else. Like you never really know. What I'd like to know from the artist's perspective is how you work out the timeline for different projects. Like, is that just something that really only comes once you've got experience? Is there kind of a standard within the artist community how long you think things should take? We've talked before about um, sometimes people work on projects and they get delayed and delayed and delayed and it, and it seems unnecessarily delayed. And so I would like the artist's perspective on where you come up with the timeline to be fair to both the customer who's commissioning it, but also you for the time that you're providing to make it. To be honest with you, uh, since I don't have any personal projects that I'm actively working on, uh, aside from with Catalytic Comics, we do what we can to work out a timeline. And considering that I work relatively quickly, we do try and work that out as well. You are crazy fast, dude. Yeah, it's just second nature. Yeah, it really just varies from artist to artist. There are just some that work like weeks at a time. There are others that work like months at a time. But regardless of time frame, it's really important that you make sure that you stay connected with your clients. I mentioned in my commission sheets that communication is key. If something happens that could be detrimental to the project, or that could affect your work on the project, you should let them know. Like, don't leave them in the dark. And it goes both ways, too. I know uh, one artist I was talking about while prepping for the show, they mentioned they had a case once where it was the commissioner already paid for the artwork up front. Uh, the artist made a WIP or work in progress. And then they just, like, disappeared, like, total radio silence for a month. And so the artist is like, okay, like, do I proceed? Do I just wait? Because, like, the person paid for it. Like, don't they want their art? <laughs> right? And then, of course, also, I mean, on the other side, too, I've had cases where, like, I paid for art and then someone just disappears for, like, two months. And then all of a sudden they get back suddenly, like, I fell behind on some stuff and uh, now I'm going to start working on it. I've had yeah. that happen a couple times. 
it was kind of annoying. I think I've had one artist that I've commissioned and I had to wait like over two months. I tried contacting him like every month. He would get back to me saying it will be done, but I had to contact him again like a month later. It can be aggravating sometimes when they say that it'll be done, but you really don't know when it's going to happen. And especially when it takes months at a time. Yes, indeed. Or because I know we've got a lot of Common America fans on the call, there is that ongoing rivalry of there are creators, you will know, we'll just say they're out there that sometimes they don't fulfill for years at a time. I was going to say um, there is a fan project that we're not going to make any references, but let's just say it, th- there might be some inspirations around those type of events. There's a real possibility that Iconic Comics is going to like fulfill several books and build up enough of a fan base with enough fan characters to then make fan fiction teasing about how late the books are <laughs> before the book ever fulfills. It's essentially like a domino effect. It just keeps going. And when you mention about this, because this is also on the project side too, because I know for some people, like they'll take commissions on for a while and then pause for a while. Whereas I know like in your case, Vinny, because you've got to put out little chat every week. And I know that there's an artist you work with for that. Now, what are some things that you do to like, do you plan ahead, like have some, some of your scripts drawn ahead? I try to, but at the same time, I do like to not get too like this. I just recently finished up about a, like a five strip story arc, which was my first time I did something like that, where I had it kind of planned ahead, but I do like to try to leave room to be topical in case something comes up i mean with like a comic strip style thing you want to you don't you want to be evergreen but you also kind of want to address you know stuff as it's going on so that the you can capture the heat of the moment it's a little different than when you're making a a comic book where you're trying to just tell your you know contained story with a comic strip you're trying to be a little more reflective at least so far and you know the vast almost one year of experience i have (laughs) and having read it you know for a while so i do I do like to do that. I also don't want to overwhelm the artists I work with, you know, because if you send too much at them at once when they're used to doing some of that other stuff, you know, it's it's a little too much, right? You from a person who's working with an artist, you want to be fair to their workload. You don't want to overwhelm them too much and think you're their only client, that you're the only customer that matters and that they're going to bend over backwards for you. Uh, you, you need to realize that these people are professionals and you should treat them with that. Now, the other end of the spectrum is I've also dealt with, you know, in that process sometimes, when, you know, when they're not so professional about meeting the deadlines that you've mutually agreed on that you think is fair for the art to be done, it can be very frustrating. And I know we mentioned that a little bit. So for my end with making a creative product, I'm luckily enough, I'm lucky enough that I've found the team that is pretty good about being on deadline gets what i want you know when i give them the scripts and and the design inspirations and everything else like that so for me i don't feel like a lot of pressure to try to be really far ahead because i trust now after having done it now for a year with a, a pretty consistent team i know that what i give them can be done and sometimes if i'm working on a shorter deadline i'll i'll work with the artist on cheats what I mean by that is that you can look at some of your previous work and see with the artist, you know, like, okay, we've reused this background already. We're going to set it in this setting. So you don't have to do new work on that. We're going to kind of reuse basically the same strip and just kind of change some hand gestures and facial expressions. Otherwise we can use the same exact one. And when you do something like that, man, you can make the turnaround go from like a few days to like 24 hours. So you know, once you really hit a groove with a creative team from, you know, a creator standpoint, you can do stuff like that. And I'm pretty comfortable with it at this point. As the commissioner, even though you're not the artist technically, it is good to still study things like speed draws or understand the importance of like the WIP process, because um, you also want to start thinking in terms of just like when I was getting a character art done with John, that sometimes like there are changes to be made. And I'm like, if we like specifically do this one thing on the hair or like if we do like this one parts changed in that case, it's not that much work and it still gets most of what I was trying to get done across. You can also start thinking of that in terms of like, how can we get the closest to the goal while making the smallest changes possible? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think having flexibility is super important and just having that flexibility and the level of coordination 
just so the process just goes smoothly as possible. And that really worked out for uh, Mike and I. Yes, indeed. And at some point, I'll have to have you drop into the chat the link for the uh, the collaboration that we're doing, because that, that was a fun collaboration. Oh, we, yeah. Uh, was... We got all the trading cards done. Vinny, uh, Miss H had a question for you, which was, who is doing the art for Little Chat? That is someone who isn't really on social media. We, he, does, you know, he doesn't really want to be. My comic strip is a little topical, and so the artist is perfectly fine working with me on it doesn't really feel the need to want to be credited if that makes sense <laughs> i mean it's someone yes. i yeah it's someone I, i've worked with now I, I found him online and you know work with him now for over a year i respect uh, and i think that's another thing right i respect the artist and what they're comfortable doing and if you find one that'll work with you on your project but maybe doesn't want to necessarily put their name on it you know that's cool in my case again since i do lean a little more topical and maybe political in some people's eyes with some of the humor. I understand that. And so I, um, I choose to respect that as Mr. H says, those artists do commissions. Um, they do. Um, but again, if I start bringing out their name, they're going to end up being associated with it. So it's a double-edged sword, right? I'd love to promote them and get them more work. At the same time, they've asked to kind of not specifically be linked to my project. So it's kind of weird, right? You know, you you really want to help someone out. And at the same time, you're kind of like, they've given me another thing that uh, that would maybe make that a problem if I bring it up. It's, it's something that, you know, I think, uh, you know, some of the people here have kind of seen in the indie comic scene, there is a thing where sometimes people who get associated with projects do get a lot of heat on them and lose other jobs that they might have as a result of doing things that they, you know, are getting paid for. And so um, it's an interesting debate, right? You know, an artist has to also look at when they hire, when they choose to be commissioned and do a project for the person, you're, you're kind of going to be associated with the content that you're doing the art for. And are you comfortable with that? And to what degree are you comfortable with that? So when you find, in my case, an artist that is, I respect um, what they can do. And yes, uh, Miss H, I have helped people get stuff done with that artist through me if they wanted a kind of back channel. People who... Um, yeah, so maybe just them. reach out to them. Yeah. Yeah, maybe on Twitter or something. Okay, and I see, Slender Dad, you've just had a screen share here. Yeah, that is the website. So yes, these are, of course, um, the main character and his main antagonist in the story. As well as, yeah, a few others if you uh, go over there. I think we've revealed like six characters so far. Yeah, we just revealed Hippie on the newsletter. As far as character design goes, Hippie is by far my favorite one for the character <laughs> design. Thanks a lot. I just had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, some inspiration from like some 80s anime, I think. Yeah. And I know a couple of these are insert characters. because like Hippie is a reference to an actual Hippie that I know. And like that's where I got the cat T-shirt from because the <laughs> guy actually has one. And I'll say you actually got pretty close to how the guy actually looks too. That's what's like so funny about it to me. Like I could totally see see the person in mind right now. <laughs> Thank you for those wondering like how this one came out. It was first I commissioned a couple of images uh, with with John just that were kind of one offs. And then uh, after that, I'm like, you know, I really like the art style, and so we reached out, and then we and then this one we actually we had a discussion to get it set up. And this is, I think, part of it, too, on the commissioner side, which is when you have a big project, a way to protect both yourself and the artist is to just start with small projects, right? Like almost everyone I work with, I'll start with like, we'll say like a project that's usually under 100 bucks, oftentimes under 50, and just do a one-off project to say like, hey, like, what's this guy's art style? And just what's it like? And there's a couple of characters that I especially like getting drawn. So I've got for Petra, like literally a dozen different variations of them by different artists. And each guy brings something new. Like you brought the bandolier with the kind of like glowing piece on the chest there. Which was a touch that I know I think both me and Joey really, really liked. I know. Now I need to like write up a reason for it to be there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks a lot. And, and so what happened though is that Right. Like out of that dozen, I'd say they're like three or four people that I wanted to work with further. And then um, and then, yeah, one of them was this one for the trading card art. That's where these are going to ultimately end up is on uh, trading cards we're producing. 
And then uh, another guy who did our background for this podcast, uh, that was uh, Shabby J, which for the Common America fans, you guys know, he, I think it was Common America 2, uh, Tim inserted him into the comic. There's a picture of him in there. And so he has become my book artist now because... Again, that was the thing. Like we did an experimental piece, we did Nash Can together, and then we said, "Okay, that that gives me the confidence, but also it gives him the confidence that I can do my part to get the references and script and everything to him on time." Because mm-hmm. that's the thing. Like as the commissioner, like you need to give the artist the tools and resources they need to succeed, and you need to be just as timely as the artist is in turning it around. And if you don't mind me asking you, John, so like for both, like some good and bad cases. Like, have you been given cases where someone just like throws a couple sentences at you and just say, go, have you had people instead, like give you like 10 pages of content for like one of these avatar commissions? Like, Oh geez. Like 10 pages. Thank God. No, (laughs) but I have had quite a bit. And I think there would be some times where I would ask for a clarification on a couple things, but even if it was just like a long paragraph or it was just a couple sentences, as long as we're kind of coordinated and I'm allowed to just do what I can, then I believe it works out. I don't really have much of an issue. I try and be very patient, especially when it just comes to making necessary changes. Yes, indeed. Because I think another thing to consider about it too is for all these projects, sometimes it's also good to think about like what it breaks out to per hour. And that's both like on the artist side when you're pricing the art, As well as on the commissioner side, it's like, am I like going to make this guy sit here and read for two hours before he even starts drawing? In which case, (laughs) right? Like, I need to at least make sure that he's paid for the time. I will admit those tidbits that you give for each of the characters while we're working, it is really informative. It does give a nice background and it's appreciated. For for those who don't know, like sometimes like I just like start talking about the story story I write because I like it a lot. (laughs) And I'm always worried that I'm like, am I flooding this person with like unnecessary information? And I I don't know, like, do you you get many people that get that invested into it? And for you guys in the chat who are artists, like, do you ever get people who get like really invested in their story and like to start information overload with all their stuff? I don't think I've had that happen necessarily, to be honest. I think you might be the only one, at least in my case, Mike. Okay, then that just that just means I'm weird then. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> Actually, scratch that. I think there is one other person I can think of. Yeah, I think one thing we can do at this point is just like start summing it up. Let's see, Xander had a good point here, especially if it has less visuals to go off for the artist in question. Yeah, I, I know that's like, especially when you first get started. One thing I was told from, uh, it was Vinny actually, that every comic book character usually has a celebrity look like, and that is because it's easy to find pictures of that celebrity from multiple angles well yeah because a lot of um some artists not all but some like to cheat and so they'll look for being able to either get you know easy 3d models they could get you know but anyway having to you know have character portraits a good a good example of that 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 isn't as celebrity focused i think i've mentioned before is alex ross if you start seeing it a lot you'll notice because he uses real life models for some of his bases you'll notice that especially like the superman and captain america and even though they're different characters will look very similar because he's using kind of the same model you know because they're the you know the big bulky kind you know build so uh sometimes it can make a a little bit of an issue with differentiation between our you know between characters so but yeah it's, it's because you know you've got to be fair artists sometimes want to make their job a little easier and so if they can give themselves little cheats i'm sure you know our artist who's with us tonight be if he's honest do you have little cheats that you use to help make your process faster i don't know if i necessarily call this a cheat but i a guess hack. when i start my skeleton process i don't usually do like a straight up stick usually i would just like make triangles for arms and like have like the thighs already rounded and stuff just so i can like get a head start if that makes any sense yeah like kind of some rough proportions maybe yeah exactly i'll be honest i don't use very many references but i do use them when it's absolutely necessary it's just really good to keep a like a kind of mental library so you have something to look back just to look back to you know what i mean yeah absolutely 
that um in that sense it's like kind of like setting up almost like a like a muscle memory or just yeah mental image to say like i have an idea of like what it is i'm working towards there yeah exactly now this is a little bit different on the other side of it but i also started to notice too this was um right speaking of that as as you work out character design another reason it's good to actually get something drawn in more than one style if you have the resources for it Mm -hmm. is i know when i was designing the character grace and that is kind of in story that is uh, Pauline Sensor's daughter and kind of like a political officer in the regime that my hero is fighting against. It was probably about like the fourth or fifth image that I did with that character that it was something about the guy's hairstyle that he did that made me say, you know, that is not my character. And the thing was, though, is that up until that point, there were just certain things about like the overall presentation or the hairstyle or like the face and eyes that like, weren't really solid in my mind yet and it's not until you run into something that says like okay like that is definitely out of bounds of what this character is and at that point like that's when you begin to know it's like what is in bounds now ideally you're like you you try and discover that process a little bit faster try to make those decisions earlier but in some cases like you really you just don't know until you see it drawn and again you got to let the artist be the artist for that yeah i absolutely agree with that Uh, i guess as we mentioned earlier that you never know when something is drawn that it will spark some sort of inspiration. Like I've had that happen a couple of times, like even with an art tray for, I think I had one character where I was really struggling to find a solid design, but I end up doing an art trade with someone and they did their own take on one of my characters and it ended up sticking ever since. It just made sense. Yeah. And sometimes even if you are the artist, right, having other artists give their takes on it. Again, we have a lot of Common America fans here. I mean, how many different artists, and I've been collecting pieces of this, by the way, but like, just think of like how many different artists Tim and Mark commission uh, for characters that Tim is drawing. And they've got a ton of different styles. And I'm just curious in the chat, like, which, like for the commission artists I do, which ones are your favorite? Because like, I know in my case, I like the Kafun ones. Gosh, Kafun is so good. Gosh. Also, I wanted to ask uh, one of those closeout questions, one of those last things. To to preface this a little, I have many, many children. And three of my children have all surpassed me in their own art skills. And they have their own drawing tablets. One of them draws the coolest characters. Another one has these crazy creatures. And the third is teaching me how to animate. So, Because, <laughs> you know... Her soft, malleable little child brain is just picking it up so much faster than my old, stupid, not-so-soft brain. Got quite um, the creative family there. What What would be your advice to them? Um, obviously, they're too young to start working, but uh, it, like, how, how do you keep the craft up? How do you keep it going? And and I know you, you all you artists in the comments also, please throw them up. Honestly, I'm not yeah. too sure where to begin, but if I'm going to be brutally honest, it takes dedication to build your craft and be the best that you can be. There are few people in this world that have the talent, but talent can only get you so far. If you don't build on your craft, then I think you'll just stay stagnant. I think that's the best way that I can put it. No, I think that does make sense because um, having natural talent just means that you can get up the learning curve a little bit faster because you can just make sense of the thing you're running into faster. At the same time, like if you never practice, you will never get up the learning curve. Right. That's a great way of putting it, Mike. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Cause I remember um, it was, it was Hank Aaron once. Cause like people asked him like, how are you so talented at baseball? He's like, what do you mean? I'm just doing what's obvious. Like, look, you just, you throw the ball. Like <laughs> oh my this gosh. Is, this is the Capoon <laughs> art. <laughs> Oh, there were there were several. I just don't know how not safe for Baptists we're going. Let's just roll through because yeah, like he did a lot of the character pairings. I remember those because at some at some point we need to like do a stream where like all the Common America fans we try and like get our artwork collections together into like one giant Dropbox or something. Because I know at this point, like I know a few people have like a couple hundred pieces. I've got like three hundred pieces. Three hundred? What? <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of fan art and commission art done for the for this set so far. Yeah, and this is just Cafoon generally. This guy is good. I really like this one. I thought this one looked cool. I agree, man. Because they're all because this guy has like the environmental energy that he can do too. Pretty good stuff. All right, cool. And um, 
Yeah, now that we're starting to come up on the hour, you guys have any other uh, closeout type questions as we get ready for our free play? Or I think I covered a lot of my stuff. I know that Joey covered his. So you just to summarize your answer for him, it's just practice, right? Just practice, practice, practice is how is. There's no real like finer way of saying it. I wouldn't exactly say there's a finer way of saying it, but I think that's probably the biggest thing. I guess another thing would be making connections. I think in that's another big thing, making connections with other artists that you're interested in. They can likely help you too. I mean, as creators, we got to help each other sometimes. Like bring each other up so we can be the best we can be. No, that's absolutely true. And because um, you're right, like it really is all about relationships and there are a ton of artists out there. And you're right, like you do have to kind of like reach out to different places. Now with that in mind, um, let's, I guess one thing, one last thing we can do to close out for questions is now where all do you promote yourself? Cause um, I know some people also ask like, Oh, where can I go find an artist to work with? And of course, like I do it all on Twitter, right? That's how we met each other. Um, mm-hmm. I know also uh, new grounds is another one, right? It started off as a flash site, but like, it's really a great artistic site. But then there's also like art station and deviant art, but like, where do you see a lot of artists go to promote themselves? I think I see the most traffic, at least for me personally, on Twitter. But another great platform is Instagram, since it's gallery-based. That's another great one for artists to start out. And that's where I started out as well, like for social media in general. And that was like back in 2018. No, and that's a good point, because, yeah, like one of the, like, the initial evaluations you do is just look at the portfolio. And, yeah, Instagram is definitely a good one for just like saying, like, here it is. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, oh, and then we also got an audience question from Spooky Pretzels here. What is your icon from? Oh, my icon. Oh, this is actually a, another character of mine. Um, her name is Chariot. Uh, she's actually an android, formerly ex-military. She was actually part of an initial project that I currently have scrapped at the moment. I'm not sure when or how I'll even revisit it, since I have another different project in mind i was gonna say is that the uh bailey malibu because um oh no that's that's entirely different even though she is also a redhead (laughs) yes indeed and um because speaking of that yeah tell us about some of the various projects that you've got open and for us to kind of pay attention to and then also i saw on your profile you've got commissions open pretty soon uh i will be opening commissions next sunday and i'll have 15 slots opened and there is a form where you can uh, apply. So be on yeah. the lookout. <laughs> and, and by the way, guys, um, I, I will tell you now, those commission slots fill up very, very fast. So like, do not wait on that. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, cool. So anything else you want to promote before we uh, kind of move to the next phase? Um, well, if you want to see more of my art, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and DeviantArt. That's where I'm most. That's where I'm the most active. Cool. Sounds good. And um, while we're at it here in a moment, I'll also drop into the chat the uh, the link to your website as well, because oh, I know you've got all your uh, profile stuff there. But again, yeah, thanks for coming on and uh, talking with us as we kind of like work out this kind of special part of the creative process of like actually getting the art made. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. At some point, I'll need to like get some bumper music because now I'll bump it up. We are starting free play so I'm still working on the bumper animations it's just it's gonna be a while i still <laughs> well, gotta learn how to animate can we just farm it out to your child who's good at it <laughs> oh 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 we could <laughs> i feel like we get a better result quicker uh, Are, this, you're not paying me okay i'm doing this for free <laughs> oh. I mean, I'm doing it. Look, I, I feel like I've paid you in your new growing love for isekai anime that you're now <laughs> watching all the time. And you've paid me back on all these darn slice of life animes that I've now started watching. <laughs> that's that's the Weeb Bout episode, wasn't it? That's right. In fact, uh, one of our audience members, Anime, who's probably going to be uh, joining us on the next one where we discuss uh, in Devil is a Part-Timer. The first one was about ReZero, the greatest isekai anime that's ever been made that Joey seems to have unnecessarily nitpicky problems about because he thought, you know, 
he's he doesn't appreciate real art. But it, I we're going for the deep cuts, huh? I'm kind of pl- plugging it because we've got the weave out episode is done now, right? And, and you know we've got the editing done. We'll be dropping it soon. So I want to kind of build up a little bit of mystique around what people want to listen to our two hour conversation about. <laughs> so. 